drawing upon usually our understanding of political leadership, military mm -hmm. leadership. The hallmark of these leaders is the capacity to make hard decisions, which usually mean blood-soaked decisions, which have a, an effect on followers, which we don't know why they're doing this, but it's for your own good. Um, is there a, there's a disconnect, therefore, between our, our traditional understanding of the hard decisions that are made with your intuitively uh, very, very uh, sound notions of, of equals. Yeah, yeah I, I, without, you know, at risk of oversimplifying, I would say we get into those situations where we have to make those blood-soaked hard uh, decisions that you know that have a tremendously negative ripple effect uh, as a result of bad management. We haven't incrementally built the governance structure. We haven't incrementally developed shared meaning, shared understanding of goals. We haven't utilized the collective human resource that we've brought together uh, correctly. And, and by correctly, I mean in a humanist kind of way, in that people are allowed to be who they are rather than what we think we want them to be or what we restrict them to being, all right? And so I would, just, I would suggest at one level that if we did have that, that buildup, many of those types of decisions would evaporate. They yeah. wouldn't have to be made. Now, it doesn't mean that no, there's no circumstance under which it would happen. Of course it would, yeah. all right? But the understanding of it and the repercussion, the negative repercussions would be minimized if there was an understanding of why that particular thing had to had to take yeah. place, uh, politics you can never you can never explain. Uh, but if you know, take the military example. Um, the there was a marvelous book written about uh, oh, twenty odd years ago that looked at bureaucracies and these kind of hierarchical uh, structures. And, and one of the key points I remember from it was the idea that the military in peacetime is very different from the military in time of war. That military in peacetime and in training and, and, and all the rest of this reinforces and you know, establishes and reinforces that very hierarchical follow orders, chain of command type of thing. But in the heat of war, that isn't really how decisions get made. And it's really interesting that when you look at well, again, when you look at the historical evidence, when you look at the, the memoirs and things that are written, about the heat of battle. It's the person hmm. who seized the correct opportunity, saw that something needed to be done, irrespective of chain of command or anything else, and got things going, made that, made that important leadership move to get things, uh, to get things back on track.